In this video, we're going to look at how to solve quadratic inequalities. Now, quadratic inequalities are slightly more complicated to solve than linear inequalities. The reason is where a linear graph will just go in a straight line, and you're, if you're asked if it's uh, you know, bigger or smaller than a certain value, it's just easy to find the answer. A quadratic inequality, whenever you're asked to find if it's bigger or smaller than a certain value, well, if you look at the graph, the graph will come down and then up again, or up and then down again. So, you know, it's a little bit more complicated to solve. Now, there's different ways to solve quadratic inequalities. Um, one way is using a, what they call a um, critical values table. Um, I like to solve quadratic inequalities by sketching the graph, so that's how I'm going to be solving them in this video. Okay, so um, here's an example. Um, here we've got the graph um, x. Uh, We've got the graph here, y equals x squared minus x minus 6. And what we're going to do is we're going to solve the inequality x squared minus x minus 6 is less than 0. Now, if you notice, um, obviously this is the x-axis and this is the y-axis. Whenever this is less than 0, you can see it's going to be less than 0 when it's below the x-axis. So that's this section here of the graph. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to have a look at where what value this is or find out what value that is and what value that is and then we're going to explore some of the values and find out what our solutions would be. Okay. So um, to find these two values where a quadratic crosses the x-axis what we're going to do is we're going to get the graph which is y equals x squared minus x minus 6. Now you want to find when it's equal to 0 so we're going to write 0 equals x squared minus x minus 6. We'll factorize and solve it. So 0 equals Factorizing gives you x minus 3, x plus 2. Let's just check that, x squared. Uh, uh, plus 2, x minus 3, x is minus x, and minus 3 times 2 would be minus 6. So that means our solutions here will be x equals 3, or x equals minus 2. So that means that this point here is minus 2, and this point here is 3. Okay, I'm just going to get rid of this for the moment, and what we're going to do is we're just going to explore what happens. Okay, so if I was to substitute some values into this expression, this x squared minus x minus 6, okay? So x squared minus x minus 6. And let's see what we get whenever, I don't know, x is equal to 3. Well, now x is equal to 3, we get x squared, which is 9, minus 3, which is 6, minus 6, which is 0. So the answer is 0, and that's why it's there. If we go into, just say, for instance, this point here, whenever x is equal to 2, x equals 2, you get 2 squared, which is 4, minus 2, which is 2, minus 3, which is, or minus 6, which is equal to minus 4. So we obviously you can see it's below the x-axis because it's negative. If I was to try 1, 0, minus 1, I would get all negative values for that, or even for decimal numbers, like minus 1.5, minus 1.9 even, minus 1.99, and so on. Okay, and again, minus 2 would give me the answer of 0. Okay, so what that means is if I want to solve this inequality, this inequality of x squared minus x minus 6 is less than 0, that means that any value here between minus 2 and 3 would give me a negative. So that means that x, my answer will be x, is going to be less than 3, but it's going to be bigger than minus 2. Because that means that any value of x between minus 2 and 3 would work. It would give me a negative value. Okay, um, it obviously can't be minus 2 or 3 because they would be equal to 0 and this isn't less than or equal to 0, it's just less than 0. On that note, if I was asked to solve x squared minus x minus 6 is less than or equal to 0, my answer would be because obviously this point here was 3 and this point here was minus 2, the solution would be x is less than or equal to 3 but bigger than or equal to minus 2. And that means that any value for x between minus 2 and 3 would work, it would give me a negative value. Okay, let's have a look at the same inequality now, whenever it's equal, uh, bigger than zero. So again, we know this point here on the x-axis was three, and this point here on the x-axis was minus two. Um, now we wanna find uh, which values give me a positive value. So positive values are whenever the graph of the function, or the graph of the uh, quadratic, is above the x-axis, okay? Now we see we've got two distinct regions here. We've got to the right of three, and to the left of minus two. Okay, so let's just try putting in a value. Let's just say x is equal to 4. Okay, so if x is equal to 4, that would be 4 squared minus 4 minus 6. That would be 16 minus 4 minus 6. And that would be 12 minus 6. That be, that's going to equal a value of 6. As you can see, that's positive. If I was to try 3.5, it would be positive. 3.1, positive. Actually, any value bigger than 3 would be positive. And that would go on forever. For instance, 100, a million, and so on, because a quadratic graph has a U-shape. It will just carry on going up. So that means that one part of my solution will be any value of x which is bigger than 3. But also, we've got this section here. 
Okay, we've got this bit to the left of minus two. Okay, so it means, for instance, if I was to try a value smaller than minus two, perhaps minus three, let's see what we get. So whenever x is equal to minus three, well, minus three squared, negative times a negative is a positive, that's nine. Minus x, that's so going to be minus minus three, which would be plus three, and then minus six. So it's going to give me 12, and then take away six would be equal to six. So again, if I was to try minus three, it gives me a positive. Minus four would be positive, and carry on forever would be positive. Even minus, um, you know, minus 2.1. 1, minus 2.01 and so on. Just any value that is less than minus 2. Now we can't write that as one inequality. So what we do is we write our answer like this. We say that x is going to be smaller than minus 2 or x is bigger than 3 because we've got two distinct regions. We've got this region and we've got this region. So we write it as two different answers. We say that x is less than minus 2 or x is bigger than 3. And likewise, if it was bigger than or equal to zero, what we would do is, we, if it was bigger than or equal to zero, it'd be, obviously it means it can be zero as well. We know that the graph of the, the quadratic is equal to zero at minus two and three. So we could put the little line there, and the little line there, and we could say that x is less than or equal to minus two, or x is bigger than or equal to three. Okay, let's have a look at some questions. So our first question we're going to try is this one here. Solve the inequality x squared plus 2x minus 15 is less than 0. So again, what I want to do is I want to sketch the quadratic graph. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let y equals x squared plus 2x minus 15. And I'm going to draw that graph. Um, let's let it equal 0 to find the key values. So let's again factorize and solve it. So factorizing x x. Now if it didn't factorize, you'd use the quadratic formula or completing the square. So x, x um, is going to be plus 5 and minus 3. And that means that the values for x would be x equals minus 5 or x equals 3. So that means it's going to cross the x-axis at minus 5 and it's going to cross again at 3. Okay. So sketching the quadratic graph, it will come down through there and then come back up again and through there, okay? Please excuse my quadratic graph sketching. Okay, now we're trying to find when this quadratic is less than zero, okay? Now you can see it's less than zero for any of these values here between minus five and three, okay? So that means, for instance, minus four would work, minus two would work, zero would work, um, two would work, one would work. Um, obviously it's less than zero, so three and minus five themselves won't work. That means that x is gonna be any value that is less than three, but it's bigger than minus five. And that's it, that's the quadratic inequality solved. Next, I solve x squared minus nine x plus 18 is bigger than zero, okay? So again, let y equals x squared minus nine x plus 18, and we'll draw this graph. So that's gonna be zero equals, to find where it crosses the x-axis, we're gonna let it equal zero, so x squared minus nine x plus 18, and we'll factorize it. There's gonna be x minus three, and x minus six. So that means that x equals three or x equals six. So it means it's gonna cross the x-axis at three and six. And again, it's an x squared graph, so it's gonna be a U-shaped graph, and it's gonna come down and then back up again like so. If it was a minus x squared in the in the question, um, you could just bring it all to the other side. Um, that's personally what I would do. I, I like just drawing the U-shaped quadratic, so just bringing them all over to the other side. Or you could draw the quadratic, but remember it would be an n-shape. Okay? So let's just draw this. We've drawn this uh, quadratic. We want to find this time when it's bigger than zero. So bigger than zero is when the graph, or when the graph of the expression, is above the x-axis. So as you can see, it's above the x-axis at this section and this section here, okay? Uh, again, excuse me, draw. Uh, so here, we've got any value for x which is bigger than six, because um, obviously six is zero. We want it whenever it's bigger than zero. So seven would work, eight would work, nine would work, and so on. So we're gonna say that x is gonna be bigger than six, or um, obviously any value less than three works as well. So two, one, zero, and so on. So x is less than three. Because it's two different regions, you're at it like this. x is less than three, or x is bigger than six. And the last question, it says solve 4x squared minus 7x plus 20 is less than x plus 17. Now the way I solve these uh, ones whenever it's not a zero is I just bring everything over to one side. So because it's 4x squared and that's positive on that side, I'm going to bring everything over to the left hand side. So let's minus x from both sides. So that'll be 4x squared minus 8x because whenever you take 1x away from both sides, that'll bring you down to minus 8x. And we're going to take 17 away from both sides, so that'll be plus 3. And then because 
that then we just leave you less than zero. So again, we're going to let y equals 4x squared minus 8x plus 3. And we're going to draw that graph. Um, obviously here, whenever we're factorizing this, it's going to be a little bit more complicated uh, because it's 4x squared. Um, I'm going to, I think it's 2x and 2x. Um, it's going to be a negative and a negative and a 3 and 1. And let's just test it. 4x squared minus 6x minus 2x minus 8x plus 3. Excellent. And solving that would give you x equals a half or x equals 3 over 2. Okay, uh, so let's just sketch our quadratic graph. So we know it goes through here at a half, and we know it goes through here at one and a half or three over two. And sketching the quadratic it would look something like that. Again, it's a positive x squared, so it'd be a u-shape. Now this time we're trying to find when it's less than zero. So whenever that's less than zero would be whenever it's below the x-axis. So that's this section here. So any value here between 0.5 and 1.5, so if I tried 0.7 or 1, uh, 1 or 1.4 or whatever, they would all work. Obviously it's just less than zero, so I can't let it equal a half or uh, 3 over 2. So I'm just going to write x is any value that's bigger than a half but less than 3 over 2. And that's it. So that's how you solve quadratic inequalities.